What's good, my Wicked Kingdom? Joker here, and we are finally back. And man, it's it's been a while. I've had things going on. Taken King things going on. And boy, has the Taken King been a blast. But you know what? We need to get back to our regularly scheduled program. And to do that, I thought I'd start doing kind of weapon overviews. And I want to go ahead and talk about the Aya Saluna. A hand cannon that I can't for the life of me understand why more people aren't talking about it. This is the Hopscotch Pilgrim of the Taken King. A weapon whose base stats are so good that it can have a relatively crappy roll and still be good, if not nearly overpowered. So let's get into it. The boring stuff first. By default, the weapon does 85 to the head and 57 to the body for a 3 to 4 shot kill in Crucible. You may also have noticed that the majority of the stats are equal to, if not better than, Hawkmoon's. Part of this is the rifle barrel perk I've chosen, but the majority of what makes this gun is the large chunk to stability that it has that Hawkmoon doesn't. This allows the user to be more spray and play with it than, say, Hawkmoon. Also, being a legendary hand cannon, it allows the user to decide which sights to use. I chose True Sight because of the added aim assistance. It allows me to be just a little bit more spammy with my shots, and the aim assistance and the bullet magnetism that is granted because of the aim assistance will generally track to the target a little bit better than if I was just using Hawkmoon. All of this results in a hand cannon that says, sure, Hawkmoon might be able to do it in two shots. Might. But in the time it takes to fire those shots and correct for accuracy, I've already fired three. And that's kind of the draw for me. The way it feels, the quickness, the snappiness of the gun, allowing me to do what I need to do when I need to do it. And that's important in this current meta, as we see it shifting into an odd place where, for me at least, it seems like the high rate of fire, low impact, spray and play archetypes are not only becoming more prevalent, but starting to dominate the Crucible. So let's go ahead and take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good. Aya Saluna is a legendary hand cannon with the stats of an exotic. This is going to be a draw for a lot of people, hand cannon users in particular, who have always geared towards the exotic hand cannons because they were just the best in class. Now with the nerf to Thorn and Last Word, and Thorn further being nerfed by not being brought into year 2, hand cannon users have been shifting between Hawkmoon and the Last Word. And, well, this is just a nice alternative. This allows for more customization if given the right roles, and it really allows you to experiment with the other exotics without losing the assurance that comes from having a weapon that's not only consistent, but within an archetype that you're familiar with. Personally, I love having the freedom not relying on an exotic hand cannon, which I really always have. This allows me to use things like Hereafter and Raze Lighter instead of what a lot of people would view as a crutch being the exotic hand cannons. On top of that, Aya Saluna also has a great rate of fire, great impact, great stability, and the second highest magazine, at least I believe it's the second highest magazine, available to hand cannons at 11. The highest belonging to Hawk Moon at 13. The Hawk Moon comparison is obvious and almost necessary with it kind of taking the place of Thorn as King of Multiplayer. But, as a weapon, it really does, in my opinion, outshine its predecessor. With the ability to have different sights and barrel-type perks changing the fundamental behavior of the weapon, largely for the better, it really has that little extra something that can take it from a great hand cannon to an amazing one. Another place Hawkmoon suffers is from its poor recoil. This is well-deserved because of the three magical bullets, but it is kind of an issue. Aya Saluna, on the other hand, has no issue with recoil whatsoever. It's all the elegance of Hawkmoon with very few of the base drawbacks. Now for the bad. With Reforging rightfully gutted from the game, when Aya Saluna drops, on the very rare occasions that it does drop, you're stuck with whatever you're given. Sometimes this means god tier roles like Outlaw, Rangefinder, Rifle Barrel, Small Boar, Hidden Hand, or Third Eye. Other times you get Mulligan, Extended Mag, which actually does not work on this gun, or Grenadier. And now for the ugly. The Aya Saluna is a Crucible-only drop. At this time, I'm unaware of if it can be rewarded through Crucible packages. However, I don't believe so. Not the normal ones, at least. 
I did receive a Split Shifter Pro and an Ash Factory from the Shacks Weekly Rewards, which leads me to believe that that might be an additional avenue to receive this weapon. However, if one has looked at the quest line on how to receive Shax's weekly packages, you'll know that this is bollocks. So while this might be another avenue to attempt to receive the weapon, it's probably not the best. Crucible, unfortunately, doesn't have the same reward drop rates as Grinding Strikes does. Part of this is the lack of sequential match buffs, something like the sequential strike buff you receive when playing multiple strikes. This buff, which is available in strikes, increases the likelihood of top tier rewards dropping from bosses at the end of strikes. With RNG and seemingly no preference for winning teams or top of the leaderboard players, getting this weapon can prove to be a grind. In the three weeks that Taken King has been out, I've only ever gotten one, and I've yet to see a Crimson Spectre drop for me or any of my teammates. In three weeks. Which more so highlights an overall problem with the Crucible reward system than it does the weapon itself. And yet, that reward system is kind of the barrier to receiving this weapon, or receiving a good roll on this weapon once you've received it. The ugly part of this weapon really does solely come down to the fact that obtaining it is a pain in the ass, and even if that grind is rewarded after days or weeks of playing the Crucible, you're not guaranteed a decent roll, and there's no way to fix that. I was lucky enough to get a roll that is geared more towards PvE with explosive rounds, reactive reload, and surrounded. Things like surrounded and reactive reload have come into play in PvP once or twice, but it's not something you can rely on, which is why the saving grace of this gun is its amazing base stats. All in all, this is an amazing weapon and a great alternative to exotic hand cannons from its base stats alone. Perks will only help. I give this gun my first Sum of All Tears Metal in Crucible out of ever and highly, highly recommend it, if you can get your hands on it. That'll be it for this weapons impression. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what other weapons you want to see reviewed. Stick around for the rest of my first Sum of All Tears gameplay and I hope you enjoy. My name is Joker and like always my fellow guardians, stay frosty.